Hello everyone, happy Monday. Um, I clearly have been filming. I even have my studio lights still on. <laughs> I can right turn those off. Um, clearly I've been filming. I filmed Tuesday's video and Friday's video for this week and then Sunday's is all done. That's the last day of the sew along. Um, so I'm feeling pretty good about things this week with the filming uh, situation. But I want to come on and say good morning. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to film for the daily vlog today only because I have been filming, like I said, um, we've been doing schoolwork this morning. Um, I do have a little bit of housework that needs to happen today, and um, I've got two pattern tests that I'm working on right now. Um, one's kind of an easy breezy one, and then other one's a, a real exciting one. Um, both of them are pretty easy patterns, but um, one of them is really exciting. So um, I'm going to be working on those today. Um, so I may not do a lot of filming today, and then I will tomorrow do some, um, a lot more vlog filming. Um, so that I have a, a nice vlog to go up for you on Wednesday. Um, let's see, what else do I know? I also think, um, so I'm going to be filming, I think on Wednesday, my um, April plans and, or April makes and then my May plans. And also Sean from Kittenish Behavior and Danny from Two in a Pocket, I think. I can't remember. Um, I'm... I can leave a link below, but they have done a um, YouTube challenge of, it's like hashtag show me your stash 2020. And it's like, uh, I don't know how many questions, 10 maybe questions um, of asking you questions. So you're not showing your whole stash, but has you picking out certain pieces of your fabric. And I just thought that was kind of fun. So I think on um, Wednesday, I'm going to film that as well and put that up for you guys on Thursday. So I won't have a daily vlog for you on Thursday either. Um, which will work well because I won't have much to film on Wednesday because I'll be doing like for like formal video filming. Um, so anyway, I thought that was kind of a fun challenge and be fun to go through a few things in my stash and pull them up to answer those questions. So that will be coming up on Thursday. So you'll have an extra formal video this week. Um, anyway, so I, I may tomorrow, maybe I'll take you around with me tomorrow and we can kind of go through fabric and you can help me solidify my plans for May. <laughs> Um, for May. I'm so <coughs> I still have the fabric here for the um, sorry I'm choking a little bit um, for the wide leg Pietra pants but I'm on the fence. My husband <laughs> has put a damper around on my parade and normally I don't let that bother me you know I wear what I like and what I think looks good um, but he made just like a, an off comment on my shorts um, about them not being the most flattering and sometimes that's all it takes you know to like really take the wind out of your sails I love my yellow pants and I love my shorts they're very comfortable um, I will wear them but now I'm like okay I need to do I need to look at these a little more carefully and as they're more fitting I need to do and then I was thinking do I need to go down a size maybe maybe I need to go down to a 10 I made those two in a 12 and I think I could keep the um, adjustments that I made to the front rise the same because there's very little difference in the two sizes but maybe that would take some of the width out of the hips and leg a little bit um, and make them a lo look a little more streamlined. Um, so I'm going to think about that a little bit more. I haven't cut out or taped together the wide leg pat pattern yet. It would need to be reprinted but I can reprint on the back side of what I've already printed. Um, which isn't, you know, that'll work. So I'm thinking, trying to think, you know, if I want to do that. So I may be holding off on the Pietras just for a little bit longer to where I can kind of wrap my head around what I want to do. Because again, I want to be making with, um, purpose. I don't want to be just making willy-nilly, um, just to be making. So, um, I want things to definitely be filling holes in my closet, number one, and to be things that I really, really love. I mean, you are going to definitely have those things that you make. You I mean, you're, not everything you make you're going to love, but, um, you know, I've already made two pairs of this pattern, so I want to make sure that it's worth it to keep going. I also don't want to waste my good fabric. You know, I want to make sure that that fabric is stuff that are things that I love because I love the fabric. So anyway, I'm having a think about that and how much I should let him get into my head. <laughs> he he just very rarely has comments about anything I wear, good or bad. I mean, he's just, that's just his personality. So when he made that comment, I was kind of like, uh, first of all, rude. And second of all, oh, are they? So yeah, that was kind of my emotions going back and forth there. So anyway, I'm having a think about those just a little bit. And I may just reprint them in the smaller size and try that out. 
see if that works, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna hang off just a little bit, especially because I have these pattern tests I need to work on anyway. So that is my day today. I will probably come back um, a little bit later and chat with you again. Um, Cause yeah, really today I, like I said, a little bit of cleaning and then just working on those pattern tests. So that's kind of my jam for today. Okay, I hope you guys are having a good Monday and I'll be back later to talk a little bit more with you. Okay, bye. Hey guys, happy Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? <laughs> Um, so I'm just now getting on here and it's like 715. Um, I have had a really off day is what's basically happened. So um, I tell you, you guys are becoming my therapy. I don't even make, need to make appointments with my therapist anymore. <laughs> just talk to you guys. So um, die. I've got Gidget down here with me. I'm sitting on the floor because I want to, we're going to talk fabric here in just a second. Um, but so, um, sorry about the banks. It's also a really, first things first, it's a really crappy day outside. <laughs> it's just been cold. I think the high today was like 47. Um, so it's cold. It's been kind of raining off and on and just kind of gloomy. So that's been strike number one against today. Strike number two against today is that I had to get up super early to take Gidget to the vet. Um, I say super early. I was, I used to get up at 515 in the morning when my kids were still in normal school. So this was like what? month and a half ago, two months ago. And that's the way it's always been. Um, but for some reason, since this quarantine, I had to have her dropped off at the vet between seven and eight. And I was like, oh, between seven and eight. <laughs> Cause I've been sleeping into like 7.30 probably. I like to have the kids up and starting to eat breakfast by eight. And then we start school at nine, um, which is way later than normal. But anyway, um, I had to have her dropped off at the vet because uh, back at her um, yearly appointment in November, I think, in November, uh, the doctor detected a slight heart murmur in Gidget, which is very common for the Cavalier King Charles breed. Um, and actually, that's what killed our previous King Charles. We had a um, King Charles Spaniel, um, a Blenheim, which are the white and, um, the white and reddish brown ones, um, named Ernie, and uh, we had him from the time he was a puppy until um, he passed away right before his eighth birthday, so really young, I mean really, um, from the heart murmur. His heart just got really, really, really enlarged, and um, a couple of the heart strings or whatever, like, um, snapped, I guess. What are you doing? You're snowing up a storm. Hello. Come here. Um, anyway, it actually happened. There she is. <laughs> It actually happened at the vet, not not here um, when he passed. But anyway, it was a very traumatic thing because it happened very suddenly. I mean, he got the heart murmur. He was on medication, but it was within a year um, that he passed very suddenly. He was having trouble breathing because his heart got so enlarged that it was it was pushing against his lungs. And he just sounded awful, which is why we took him to the vet, um, the emergency vet, one night. And he passed away within like an hour of being there um, after we dropped him off. So anyway... That is kind of the backstory. So um, Gidget has a slight heart murmur, which, you know, again, a lot of the breed have the heart murmur and most of them live for a really long time with the heart murmur, with medication. Um, but the doctor recommended getting a um, cardiac look at her heart just so we get a baseline, just to kind of um, determine what kind, you know, how much medicine she should be on and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, um, that was back in November and, um, it's, it's just a really expensive test. And so I waited, I was gonna wait till after Christmas, but then of course the Corona stuff all happened. Um, but I finally called and got her in. And so she went in today, now that our vet's like open for non-emergency things. And um, anyway, so I just, I mean, I dropped her off and it was just a test. And I know that there's nothing with the test, but I was just having a lot of feelings about everything that happened with Ernie. Let's see how old's Gidget. Gidget will be seven in July. So this was like seven years ago, I guess, that Ernie passed. And um, I was just having a lot of feelings <laughs> about that. And, you know, just anxiety and a lot of nerves and everything else. She's fine. Um, we don't have the report from the cardiologist yet, but the radiologist who did the test said that um, it's a pretty minor one right now, um, that everything looked pretty good. So, I mean, there is one, but it's, it's a pretty minor one, so all in all, I'm sure she'll probably get prescribed some medicine that she'll have to take for the rest of her life. But, um, you know, that's kind of it. Um, and the breeder that we got Kitchet from, all of her dogs were, you know, like 13, 14 years old, like her old ones. Um, so she, I know that she comes from a lot of, um, 
old stock <laughs> dogs that live a long time so anyway I'm sure it was just a lot of the feelings from the previous so that put me in a funk, although, and then she wasn't here, you know, because I dropped her off early this morning and then she was there. Um, but we got to go pick her up at like one, I think, when they were finished with the test. Um, and so I've, yeah, I've spent the day, I've been really, really tired. I've spent the day doing a little bit of pattern testing work um, and then cuddling Gidget, really. I just needed, I just needed that day um, to just, you know, I took a nap today. Gidget and I took a nap. Well, Gidget takes a nap 90% of the time, like she's doing right now. I should bring her on here. Gidget! Nope. What? <laughs> come here! You want to come say hi? Come here! Come here! No, she is not interested. She's giving me a look like, how dare you wake me from my slumber. You can probably see her little feet back here. <laughs> Normally, if I'm on the floor, she's, like, all up in my business. Yeah, you are. She's giving me the look. So, anyway, that's kind of the backstory, and it's just been kind of a, a low day. But, anyway, so, um, you're seeing this on Wednesday, but tomorrow, my plan, I'm going to do some filming. I want to film my uh, May plans and my April makes, and really, my April makes are just the video of me sitting down talking. I've already filmed all the twirls for that. Um, but I want to get that filmed so that I can go up on Tuesday. And then um, I want my May plans to go up on Friday. So I've been kind of um, looking a little bit about what my May plans might look like. Um, and then also Sean from Kittenish Behavior and Danny from Two in, Two in a Pocket, I believe is the name of her channel, are doing this uh, Show Us Your Stash 2020, I think is the hashtag. Um, and I thought that, I mean, it just looks like a lot of fun. Basically, it's 10 questions, and you pick a fabric to answer those questions. So it's not showing your entire stash, but just so, showing some of the highlights of your stash. And I just, you know, we all like looking at fabric. Let's be honest. That's all, uh, <laughs> we all enjoy that. Um, and I really enjoyed Sean's video. So I thought um, I might film my own and just answer some of those questions and give me a chance to kind of go through my fabric, especially now that I have my mentor Joyce's stuff added to it. Um, and go through some of them and to answer the questions. So I think I'm going to film that tomorrow too, and that's actually gonna go up on Thursday instead of a daily vlog on Thursday. Because um, usually on Thursdays, the vlog that goes up is just Wednesday's vlog, just the way that the days fall. Um, so I wanna film that tomorrow too. So I'm just kinda of going through my stash, and um, I thought I would, talk, yeah, just kinda of go through it with you. You know, we're sitting here on the floor. I think that for May, I'm going to pare down my plans a little bit and not be quite as prolific, and I think that that's okay. Um, I do have, let's see, let's start over here. I do have a couple of things that did not get made up this month that I still want to really get made up. Um, one of them is this lightweight linen, linen and like this, um, here, let me turn on one of my lights. Also, I'm also having a glass of wine because I... Does that help at all? I mean, it's like above me because I'm sitting on the floor, but that's a little better, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> my lights are still set up. There's the chair. Um, okay, so I have this lightweight linen, and I still really want to make that um, pattern scout um, fern top. And I think, God, this is such a nice lightweight linen. I definitely do want to want to do the fern top because I'm going to talk about this other lightweight linen that I have sitting here. But um, this lightweight linen I got at um, Let's sew when I was there, that fabric shop down in Evansville, Indiana, when I was there in February. So um, this did not come from Fabric Dash store or the fabric store. <laughs> this came from Let's Sew. But it is definitely, it's pretty thin. So I definitely want it to be a top. And I had said in my um, plans for April that I wanted this to be the um, fern top. And I think I'm going to do the square neckline on this one. So I think that this continues to be destined to become that top. I really want to make that up. I'm excited actually to try um, all of her patterns that I purchased when I bought, I bought three of, well, technically four, because I bought the fern top and then I bought the expansion pack for the fern top. So the fern top is a scoop neck and then I bought the expansion pack that has the square neckline and then I bought her Lulu cardigan and then I bought the Luna Crafts body bag, which I also really want, that won't, I won't get to that this month, but um, I really want to make that up. Be a perfect thrifting bag, which the thrift stores are opening tomorrow but I, I am not ready to go to them yet. <laughs> but I did send the email to my friend Jenny and said, they're opening. <laughs> it's almost time. Um, anyway, so that was one from last month that I still really want to make up. 
Then I have this uh, Butterick 6674 dress that I really want to make up. And this rayon, crinkle rayon, because um, I already have the buttons for that. And I showed you guys that in April. And I think this is going to be a sew along, but it, this one may wait just a little bit. I'm going to be doing the Kimberly dress by um, AK Patterns, Athena Keku. Um, I'm doing her Kimberly dress, and I'm doing both a, well, the pattern is a V-neck dress, and I'm going to make it sleeveless, which the dress has sleeves, but I'm going to make the dress sleeveless because that's how I've made it before. And it, she's, um, we've been talking now that she's back. Um, I'm going to do a sew long for it, but I'm going to do both the V-neck version bodice and I'm going to make one with this, a scoop neck version. So I'm going to show you how to change up the pattern so that it is a scoop neck, uh, dress. And we're going to be lining both of those bodices. So it's also, um, going to be kind of a lesson in how to, um, because that dress comes with facings, because it, normally it has a sleeve. But I'm going to show you how to take uh, a pattern that has facings and turn that into like a fully lined bodice. I'm going to leave the skirt unlined, but I am going to line both bodices, and I'm going to make them together. So I'm making two dresses on purpose this time. <laughs> but that's going to be my next sew along that goes up. And then I think I'm going to do a swimsuit, and then after the swimsuit, I think I'm going to do this this one. So sorry if you're really excited about this one, but this one will be coming. It's just getting pushed down the list a little bit and I'm gonna be making it in this. So I'll probably get this made up in May and filmed in May. Um, you won't be seeing it in May, um, but you know, I really wanna get this made up and start wearing it, but I will film the sew along as I go. And hopefully things go smoothly and <laughs> I don't, you know, miss certain footage and that kind of thing. And then the last one was this new Butterick one, which is 6725. This was also part of my plans for April that I didn't get to. And it's in this heavyweight, um, kind of a dark, I think it's called dark teal is the color, um, from the fabric store. Um, I have one and a half meters of this one, which I think should be fine for the sleeveless version of this dress. I think this one comes with cup sizes. Yes, it does. Um, dress A. Well, it says it needs two meters, but I'm short. So I can a lot of times get away with less fabric, but that's quite a bit less. I mean, we'll see. We'll iron this out and see what we can find. So that is that. Oh, thank you. My husband ventured out and got Mother's Day cards for us to send to our moms. <laughs> He's a good man, that one. Um, so I do still want to make this up if I have enough fabric. I really think I should. I a lot of times have to, because I want this to be uh, above the knee like hers. And I'm 5'2", and I think these patterns are drafted for a 5'6". So I usually have to take three, sometimes even four inches out. Um, and it's a princess seam bodice, so that will be for all the different pieces that will be that much length removed which a lot of times I can get away with quite a bit less yardage just because I have to I don't need as much length so anyway anyway that I still want to put on the list okay now for the new stuff and I don't know if I've shown you guys yet, but I ordered, I think I mentioned it, I ordered some fabric from Stylemaker Fabrics. I ordered three knits because I'm, I'm actually doing two tests right now, and they are both um, for knit patterns. So um, I'm not going to tell you any more. One of them is a very easy one, and the other one is a very exciting one. So um, for me, <laughs> and you'll that'll make sense later. But I've ordered these two prints, and actually I've already cut into this one. Um, I'm making two versions of one of the test patterns. So these are both art gallery knits from Stylemaker. And this one is navy background, which is one of my, um, let me get my color thing. Ugh. Okay, so you guys know that I've had my colors done. I've talked about that ad nauseum but um i'm really now trying now that i've had fun with some of the colors i thought i could never wear i'm ready to start marrying those colors with the colors that are already in my closet that um i was wearing before that i can still wear such as the blues so i do have quite a bit of blues uh, someone was saying you should wear blue and blue is definitely i mean i've got a whole section of blues right here in my color palette um you know, everyone's like, you should work, you know, do blue like the color of your eyes. Actually, my eyes are not blue. My eyes are actually 
green. <laughs> They're like a pale teal. Um, and I know this because I had to have an up close picture of my eye. So my eyes are like a real pale, like a seafoam green. My eyes are like a seafoam green with gold in them. Um, I know that they come across as blue when I'm wearing blue, but then they come across as green when I'm wearing green and they'll look gray if I'm wearing gray. So, um, anyway, so I've got some of these blues and I think, I mean, this is a little, well, not really, maybe a little cooler navy than I technically should be wearing. Um, cause this navy is just a little bit warmer. That's actually my navy. This is a little more just like a dark blue, but I mean, it's fine. And um, it's got the orange um, little blossoms that are in there. So anyway, I have this fabric. These are cotton jerseys. This is a cotton, a cotton spandex jersey. So there's spandex in there, to, in there too. Um, they're the art gallery. They're a little bit thinner. They're not as beefy as some of the um, spandex jerseys. Um, but because it's a designer um, cotton spandex, they are a little bit more expensive. Um, but I just thought the print was really pretty. So I splurged. And you'll understand why <laughs> soon. <laughs> but I really like the print on this one. So this one's I've already cut a little bit into. So that was one of them for the test. And this is the other one. And I think this is so beautiful. Okay, so the color's not coming across. This is like a pale minty green, which is not one of my colors. But look. So we've got hot pink in here, also not one of my colors. But We've got the orange red that's in here. We've got the gold yellow that's in here. There's the teal, the dark teal that's in there. There's the orange that's in there. Um, even kind of like, um, yeah, there's a, a couple of different teals that are in there. So I have a lot of my colors that are in this print and I thought that this is also for the same test pattern as this because I'm making two different versions. The pattern has uh, two different versions and I'm making both of them. But if I have anything left over, I mean, I think like a tank top would be fun. Um, definitely underwear that I'll be making, but I mean, no one's going to see that. Um, but yeah, if I've got some extra left over, I definitely have enough. I've already cut what I need out of this one and I definitely have enough for another, um, for another top and maybe a tank top as well. So that's exciting. Or maybe that might actually, I don't know, maybe it's a knit skirt. I don't know. But these are the two knits that I bought and they're both art gallery knits. And I splurged a little bit because again, you'll see why. So this one is Botanist's Poem is the name of this one. This is Botanist's Poem. Botanist's Poem. And this one is called... Gotta get far enough back on the selvage. Um, Sarin Branchlet, Sarian Branchlet, S E R E I N Branchlet is the navy one. So I bought those and then I also picked up because it looked beautiful, this cotton modal uh, blend that is in the cherry red. I mean, it was called cherry red, which is my orangey red that I'm just my new favorite color basically on me. <laughs> and I bought three yards of this because I thought, oh my gosh, this could be a t-shirt. This could be um, a dress. It could be all sorts of things. It could be both because I've got three yards of it. I can usually get most knit dresses out of two yards. Um, if they're, you know, knee length, but, um, and then definitely a top out of a yard. So we'll see, but this is definitely, um, let's see. Oh yeah. That falls like perfectly into my like red oranges that are right here. So I've got those. So those are my new, three new fabrics. And I, I mentioned, I think the other day that I have also purchased some more, um, from the fabric store. Uh, the New Zealand shop that's down. They were having a 30% off sale on some of their linens, not all, but I did buy some. They're not here yet, but um, I did buy some and I will probably be very anxious to do some stuff with them. Yeah, just this love affair with linen. Okay, speaking of linen, 
when I did my video today that went up, which was the Love Notions, the Ready to Wear Inspiration for Love Notions patterns, I had um, put up a shirt from Anthropology that looked very similar to the Rhapsody, but it was made in a really lightweight linen, and I loved it. And I've only ever made the Rhapsody in a drapey fabric, but um, we all know how much I love the Rhapsody. And I immediately thought of this apricot linen that I got from the fabric-store.com. Um, and I think it might be perfect. Now I have three cuts of this because I bought remnants. Um, luckily, I could buy, if I needed to, more of the actual yardage of this because they've got, um, you know, they've got actual yardage in these colors. I just grabbed remnants because I wanted to try them out. Um, I just wanted to see what they, they felt like. So I've got three different cuts of this fabric and I think it comes up to like 1.7 yards in total for everything. Um, but I think this would make a wonderful Rhapsody. I'm not sure what kind of, which sleeve I could get out of it. Um, so I'll just have to play around with doing some pattern tetrising. Um, but I think that that needs to become a linen Rhapsody because now that I saw that and I wanna make a pair of printed shorts to go with it, I don't have any prints currently. <laughs> that this will work with but you know at some point maybe but um, yeah so this apricot linen is I think going to be a Rhapsody all right then I also have this also came from fabric-store.com also a remnant and I have it it's their heavyweight and I got it in this mustard color it's not called mustard though it's called like golden wheat or golden something <laughs> but I've got I think two yards of this and then I also have two and a half yards, I think, of the green, um, like a, a grass green color. Now, the grass green color I have set aside as possibly being another pair of Pietra pants, but I'm not sure yet. Um, but I think that this one is going to be a Sienna Maker jacket from Closet Case Patterns because um, I really want to recreate, I think it was another anthropology look, actually, when I did my spring, um, oh, spring street style looks and then the patterns to pair them with. Uh, the gal had like a, it looked almost like, I think I paired it with the Bond shirt from Itch to Stitch. It was like a white button down shirt and she had on like a high-waisted relaxed jean and then a yellow jacket that looked very much like the Sienna Maker jacket. And I could totally recreate, recreate that outfit if I had the yellow jacket. So um, I think I might do this now. I don't know that this jacket will get worn a ton right now because we're getting ready to get into like hot weather, but definitely when it starts cooling off a little bit, because I mean linen can be worn, I mean until it gets like super cold, and then definitely in the spring. So I think making it now would be a good idea because then as soon as I am able to wear it, I've got it. And we're also going to Colorado in um, this summer for a family vacation, fingers crossed, <laughs> if everything works out. And I think it could definitely be very useful there because we'll be up in the mountains. So um, this is going to be a Sienna Maker jacket. And anyway, this is the heavyweight linen from Fabric Dash Door. Um, that's the one here in the U.S. And then I have this linen that's like a mm, medium to heavyweight that I bought at Let's Sew back in February. This is the only other um, yardage from that trip. I bought so much fabric at that trip and I've sewn all of it up except for this piece and this linen that I showed you at the beginning love those together. We'll talk about that too in a minute. Um, again, I have more linen coming, but I bought this with the intention of making a Jessica blazer. So I have enough yardage for an orange Jessica blazer. And I still really want that to happen as I'm going through my closet and looking at, oh my gosh, I've been talking to you guys for almost 23 minutes. <laughs> but as I've been going through my closet and kind of pairing uh, modules together and kind of marrying my new colors with stuff that I really loved for my closet before, um, I'm finding, especially with a lot of the blue and the white, I think I could really get a lot of use out of an orange blazer. I think it would be a really fun pop of color and go with a lot of my navy and a lot of like the navy and yellow and the blue and yellow that I was working with um, last spring. I just think it would be a really fun thing to do. So I think I am going to, although I'm showing you a ton of things here, so I don't know why I think May is going to be less prolific than April, but I think I would like to slow it down just a little bit and make up this Jessica blazer while I have the time. I mean, we don't have anything going on right now, so um, I should definitely, it'll be a good like weekend project, you know, work a little bit and just kind of take my time, do a little bit on it at a time um, kind of type project. But yes, that's going to be a Jessica blazer. And then finally, I have this Ponty knit that I bought, oh, around Christmas time. Um, from actually the fabric store um, down in New Zealand. They were having a sale around Christmas. Um, 
They normally don't have very many sales, but with this whole pandemic, they've been having quite a few. This is a thinner weight Ponte, and I would I would say this is very similar to that chocolate brown Ponte that I used for my Great Module Sew Along suit. Um, it's about the same weight. You know, Ponte is not all, you know, it can be a many different weights. So this is about a medium weight Ponte, I think, but it's in this gorgeous red-orange, um, red that goes orange, tomato red, I guess. <laughs> and I have three meters of this, and... Um, I immediately thought I might want to make a knit blazer out of it, and I might still do that. But one of the test patterns that I'm working on this month, I think ugh, I'm going to use a little bit of this um, Ponte for it. Um, I think it will be amazing. And actually, not only that, but I also think I may do the um, Pattern Scout uh, Lulu cardigan in this too, which I doubt takes very much fabric because it's a cropped cardigan. Um, because I think this would look pretty amazing over my jumpsuit as well as the, you know, as I need a little bit extra warmth. This is kind of the same red that's in my um, teal jumpsuit that I just made. So that's kind of what I pulled out. This is pretty much my makes video, my plans video for May. Um, although I'll, I'll have more definite plans, I think, uh, with some of it. And I may throw in a few more things. I'm kind of, I really... <laughs> Actually, when I was doing all the research for the Love Notions um, uh, video that went up today, I was getting super inspired. And actually, all those big, real bold prints were really speaking to me. But I don't, I have a lot of solids in my um, stash, which is good because that's where I, what I mostly wear. But this has had me really inspired to sew some stuff with some big um, prints. I did a little bit of shopping. I didn't buy anything. A little bit of window shopping online today, but... Um, I think I can make some stuff work that's already in my stash and get kind of the same effect. So anyway, that's, uh, thank you for playing along and playing in my fabric with me and help me think through, uh, my May makes, my May plans. <laughs> okay. That's it for today. Gidget's moved a little closer to me. <laughs> yes. All right. So that is it for today. I am going to say goodnight because this is going to be well over 30 minutes with yesterday and today combined. So um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow um, in the show me your stash video. All right. Have a good one and I will see you then. Bye.